Hello viewers and welcome back to Renowned Explorers International Society. Last time, we beat up a bunch of very stereotypical pirates and took all their stuff. This time, I'm not yet sure where we're going, but when we get there, I bet we're going to beat up the people who live there and take all their stuff. Alright, let's see what we're doing. <clears throat> Bia keeps getting more and more powerful as we continue to punch bosses in the face. Uh, we acquired quite a lot of resources, so let's spend them. First of all, let's look at research papers. Since we've now completed two expeditions, we have the ability to unlock all of the trees. But the first thing we're going to do is get exploration records. I think the value of additional supplies is probably pretty obvious. Now, if we complete the history tree, we'll gain 15 renown every time we, get a, every time we hire a helper. To be perfectly honest with you, I usually play the game with very few helpers. This might be an interesting way to change up our playstyle. 15 renowns not a huge amount when we consider the fact that the score we're trying to get to to beat the game is 2500. Hmm. Well, let's see, is this... We get an extra token whenever we spend insight. Is this worth... Our next 60 research, what else could we do with it? Choose this field if you want to become renowned through status. Well, we certainly get a lot of status. If we complete all research in this product project, it will give us a double renown score from status. That's probably pretty good, actually. Let's see here. Ooh, that's interesting. And unlike all the other trees, that is a... Uh, that's a research paper that's accessible immediately after the opener instead of having to unlock other things on the way. Secrets get better, just a huge amount of extra resolve. We haven't talked about resolve at all because uh, we've never been in danger really. Um, but the way resolve works, let's go back to this screen so you can see we have six resolve right now. The way resolve works is anytime a crew member is reduced to zero spirit during combat, we lose a resolve. You can just pick them back up. You can spend somebody else's action on, a, on the next turn to just pick them right back up. But every time they go down, you're going to lose a resolve. And getting your resolve reduced to zero is how you lose the game. So, psychology would let us just pick up a huge amount of extra resolve. Power of secrets and plus one secret whenever a beguiler, quick thinker, or tactician... I don't think we are going to be able to get to level 4 Beguiler, Quick Thinker, or Tactician on any of our people very easily. Uh, engineering is the gold, fo the gold focus tree. You get research from Collect Tokens. Collect Tokens when your rogues and engineers succeed on the wheel. You know, we, uh, we have a guy who's already... I think he's already a level 2 rogue and he could very easily become a level 2 engineer. This might be a good way for us to go. What does this lead to? Just plus three supplies. Uh, new equipment shops. A treasure hunt token every time you find a treasure. That's pretty cool. This I think engineering sounds pretty strong. And also the opener is we get a tool. Uh, whenever you go to spin the adventure wheel, if you have a tool, you can expend it. And if you... Uh, when you, ex when you expend the tool, it adds 25% to your success chance. And if you fail the roll anyway, you get your tool back. So there's really no risk in using them, except for the opportunity cost of not being able to use it later. Uh, this one helps you get more research. Improves the value of discovery tokens. You get study when you perform insight jobs with certain types of people. They, um, I've played quite a lot of this game. I've played a couple hundred hours. Um... <clears throat> But they just released a patch not too long ago that completely changed all six of these trees. So some of this stuff I'm looking at for the first time. <laughs> Ooh, that's really cool. There's a unique treasure linked to this one. Alright, well I think we're going to go for engineering. So do we want to finish... Lecture Expert first? Nah, let's just go straight into engineering. We have four insight. Can we get enough? Uh, I'm honestly not even sure which one of these I want to take first. It's probably this one so that we can get the extra supplies. We won't be able to get them before this next expedition. 
but uh, we'll be able to get them right after probably. All right, so the question is, if we spend all of our insight on study, will it be sufficient to get us to that next research paper? We'll only get two tokens. So two tokens four times is eight tokens at an average value of five research each is only 40 more research, which is nowhere near what we need, right? Yeah, we need 75. It's pretty unlikely that we're going to be able to get that. So that being the case, let's have a look at what else we might need. <clears throat> We've opened up a new entourage shop. What do these guys do? We can gain some interesting perks. Rogue Merciless. Is that one of the ones he has already? It is not, but it is. he could learn it. So collect tokens, campaign tokens, or study tokens. Let's upgrade and see some more options. What's the next tier? These guys are all pretty similar. Hmm. Really, the only the only strategy we've got so far is that we like beating people up. These don't seem to be focused in that direction at all. 300 and 300. Let's upgrade it again. I want to keep seeing ooh. Okay, now these are some options. Look at this. All right, if we hire Zephyr, we'll get a lot of extra research because we get a lot of free campaign tokens at the end of the job from Bia's ability. Which, in case you are picking up late or you just don't remember from last time, uh, whenever we beat a, an end expedition boss in the aggressive mode, we get 10 free campaign tokens. And Bia gets another stack of her Terror of Thessaloniki buff. I'm pretty sure I've pronounced that name a different way every time I've said it. I apologize if you're, uh... We're definitely hiring her. I apologize if you're from a place where you're familiar with the pronunciation of that and the way I'm pronouncing it is making your ears bleed. Well, let's just see what the last... Okay, so these... These guys are all pretty similar. The, uh, 1, 2, and 4 tier specialists. They're all pretty similar. We just get to pick what kind of trait we want to we want to gain. Actually, I'm really glad that I did this, uh, did this before spending insight, because now we can go Paris campaigning if we want and get some research. It's almost like getting an additional token. It's a shame we don't have a speaker. Speakers get extra campaign tokens. Hmm. Let's also look at our item shop before we make any further decisions. So we could spend 150 gold for better armor, 180 gold for better weapons. We got a new couple of uh, things available here, a couple of trinkets, I should say, because you know I should use words that are descriptive. Okay, I think that it's not worth upgrading the shop again right now because even if we upgraded the shop, we probably wouldn't be able to afford whatever it is that we would unlock by doing so. So let's look at these trinkets. Start every encounter confident. Confident is a buff that gives you plus 25 attack damage, I believe. It's either 25 attack damage or plus 25% attack damage. And this is the uh, version of that for speech. So these are okay, but I think really we want to just like push our raw damage numbers up. <clears throat> yep, so let's just buy some weapons here. The person with the weakest offenses... Padrino has the weakest primary offensive stat. So we're going to sell his book and buy him a better book really get his speech power up there and then Philippe could use a little love as well this glove is terrible let's make some money uh, actually we get 10 to 15 status from an encounter token we're gonna take encounter tokens until we get to 300 status okay and now we'll get a little more gold. <clears throat> All right. And that'll let us buy the 320 gloves for him. 
There we go. Now we have a nice... Everybody in the party is roughly equal in power with their primary offensive stat. That's good for us. And we have enough status now to hire one of these guys. We have had a lot of things ask us for archaeologists. But maybe we ought to take something that gives campaign tokens now that we've buffed the output of campaign tokens. Do we have a diplomat? Does anybody have any levels of diplomat? It doesn't look like it, so... Doing this to gain the diplomat ability for things that, uh, for adventure wheel challenges that care about it, plus some extra campaign tokens, might be a way to go. This gives Beguiler Beautiful Smile, which uh, Padrino already has. So that's not as valuable to us. And we can pick up Athlete Wrestling. Nobody has any Athlete perks yet, either. It's interesting. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is pick up Diplomat. And we're going to teach it to Philippe. And I'll explain that here. Uh... <clears throat> the reason I taught that to Philippe is that we intend to pick this up. Uh, Philippe being a level 2 rogue and a level 2 engineer means that he'll be good at rogue and engineer challenges, but every other type of thing we give him gives him, a gives him another uh, group of challenges where he'll be the one rolling on the adventure wheel. If he wins a diplomat challenge, he's still a rogue and engineer when he wins it, and so we'll still get the uh, benefits of this. Man, I really like these new trees. They did a really good job with these redesigns. Alright, that's enough talking about abstract game design nonsense. Let's choose an expedition. So, we can go to the ones that we didn't go to before, these two stars. But, generally speaking, uh, the more stars a place has, the more rewards it has. And that's a the gap between the two-star and three-star expeditions is pretty big, uh, payout-wise. So, we've got the Highlands available. Historic Scottish relics being held by a paranoid abbess. There are people walking around, so a friendly approach could make things easier. Beguilers, diplomats, tacticians, and engineers are useful. We have uh, all of these things in little bits, but we're not so good at the friendly approach. Let's have a look at the other one. The War Temple of Sekhmet is said to be hidden in the desert sands. Exploring the desert will be hard on your supplies. An archaeologist, athlete, survivalist, or rogue will surely help. Well, we have a survivalist and a rogue. Lots of gold. Mm. We're well suited to this stuff. Finding status is pretty good, given that we've uh, upgraded the payout of our campaign tokens. Yeah, we're going to go on a Highland Pursuit. This expedition will be harder than it looks. An abbey hidden on this Scottish island holds a secret you may many have heard of, but which none have confirmed. The abbess of this abbey has become paranoid due to all the explorers and thieves knocking on her door looking for treasure. But that won't stop you. Bia is determined to get the mysterious treasure held in the abbey one way or another, one way or another means through murder. Am I willing to kill the inhabitants of an abbey? We'll see what we'll see what it comes to. You know, maybe we won't have to. The answer is yes, by the way. A village is in dire need of your help. Hello there, you explorers look mighty strong. We're often raided by bandits and could use some tactical training from some experts like yourselves. We might even reward ye with a treasure. Ye Fully, well, that should be okay. Fully training these peasants will cost you supplies, though. Well, B is really good at this. We'll get a treasure for doing this, but we'll lose two supplies. Uh, we can just take five campaign tokens and run. I think a, a good treasure is worth two extra supplies, and we have a pretty good chance of succeeding at this. You can see here, this is our tool. We could have used this to guarantee a success. It took some time, but Bia drilled those villagers into a capable militia. 
When you leave, the disciplined militia come to you with a gift. Commander Bia, please accept this crown of King... Angus, maybe? As a token of our military relations, we hope it will bring you the glory you deserve, Commander. A great treasure. This Highlander pride will shine for all to see. I am... Uh... Listen, if this is some Scottish, Irish stuff, I am so sorry if I mispronounce names. I'm gonna do my best. So extra gold in status from encounter tokens and four encounter tokens. Wow, this is a really good treasure. I like this a lot. We're gonna get into a lot of encounters. <laughs> we are very aggressive people. Uh, speaking of being very aggressive people, let's go be aggressive. You have bullies all over the world. These two Highlanders have grown fond of annoying you. Why are you explorers also explorers? Hmm. <clears throat> Let me start again. Why are you explorers all so stupid? Rocks and ruins ain't interesting. Haggis. Now that's a treasure worth looking for. When they kick away a rock, Philippe wanted to investigate. You are left no choice but to put them in their place. Oh, this is so sad. I feel like we're the the ninety eight pound weakling, and all of those uh. All of those terrible stereotypical advertisements for, like, weight gain pills. So, an encounter token for going devious. Or all these beautiful tokens for going aggressive, obviously. Our choice has been made for us. But we'll approach carefully because uh, being aggressive when they're devious is a recipe for a bad time. So, let's have a look at our opponents. They have good armor, but no speech defense, and they're weak to enrage and confident. It is just the three of them, yeah? Okay. Alright, we're standing in a yellow zone. Uh, well, we have some enrage available. Okay. We're going to enrage this guy to start off the encounter devious. We're going to defeat him with an attack to uh, to gain some points in the aggressive attitude. Let me see here. You have Try to Sadden. Every ability has two versions. Every one of the speech abilities has two versions. There's Terrify and Try to Terrify. Impress and Try to Impress. And the Try to abilities are just 20% uh, lower hit chance and 25% lower power. So we are going to, since his devious ability has the potential to miss, we're going to have him do the physical attack to finish this guy off. And then we're going to have Bia rush forward and use a devious attack on this guy, because if she used an aggressive attack, it would push us over into, a, into the aggressive attitude, which we don't want to do. We want to maintain our devious attitude for their turn so that they don't get a bonus against us. Oh, wait a second. There's something special about this guy. He's got like a purple aura. He's paranoid. So he's got different weaknesses. He's actually immune to enrage and sadden, but he's very weak to terrify and confident. Okay. Well, she's got Terrify. Yeah, let's Terrify him. Okay, that was a pretty good hit. And now we're going to try to finish them off aggressive, because as you can see, we've generated six points of deviousness and only one point of aggression, and we really want all these tokens. So, 38 damage, Philippe. Unfortunately, can't get over to the one with higher health. All right, let's move you here. He borders both of them. Ah, we can see we're not even close to getting, uh, to getting a kill yet. Right, we're going to use the amnesia shot. This is going to reduce his uh, defenses and reduce our aggressive attitude by one. And then we're going to punch him. There we go. Using aggressive abilities builds up some points in our uh, aggressive attitude. And because of the amnesia shot, we didn't push ourselves over into being aggressive as a party. Yeah, B is fine. We still have our... Uh, Philippe has Tranquility at the ready. I think this is, uh, this is the time for using it. We may as well catch everybody in it so we all get the excitement buff. 
Okay, if we... If we attack this guy, it will definitely push us over into aggression. Can you... Hmm. I wanted Pedrino to weaken this guy with a speech attack, but it looks like that's not in the cards. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to really let this guy have it with aggressive attacks. Yep, minus 30 speech defense. I did not want to be this way the whole battle, obviously. But this way we only have to endure one attack while we have the penalty. That's not so bad. And you can see the combination of the defeating an enemy and changing our overall attitude has pushed aggressive to be our dominant. Oh! Well, that's handy. He changed attitudes at the beginning of the turn, so we didn't even take the penalty. That was nice of him. Thanks, guy. I really appreciate your poor decision making. Alright. So, pretty good. Uh, extra valuable encounter tokens. Campaign tokens that give research points. So, I'm sure you can see how... Um, in the world of board gaming, because, surprise, I'm a big board game nerd as well. Did you know, people who play video games for a living on YouTube. Big nerds. Uh, in board gaming, we call this an engine game. This is all about... Uh, building up resources to purchase things that make you more efficient at building up resources so that you can then purchase even better things that make you even more efficient at building up resources. Uh, the Highlanders are sorry for their bad behavior and gift you some tribute to compensate for the trouble. Your crew takes it gladly. Yeah, sure. Collect tokens. I love collect tokens. Uh, so we've... This is kind of silly. It would take us two supplies to move to this town. Or it would take us one supply to move here, and then another one supply to move to this town. So there's literally no reason to move to this space. We should move here, see our options, and then decide if we'd like to go to the town. It seems not every day could be an exciting one. Hopefully something more explorer-worthy will happen soon. Yeah, that space could have been the Hidden Horde. That would have been cool. Alright, so this space is adjacent to three nodes that we don't yet see. Uh, this space also is adjacent to three nodes that we don't yet see. If we move to here, we'll only have three supplies left at the end. That puts us in a really bad position. I think we're going to move this way in the interest of... Ooh. Special encounter. The crew finds nothing of interest in this area. Yeah. That's okay. We found our way to something great. You find a late medieval castle. It looks like it's in excellent condition. You've heard rumors of ingenious mechanisms protecting castles and their treasures. It seems you have found such a castle. I feel like it's maybe a little premature to be making that declaration from uh, outside of it and what looks like about a mile away. You can perform your explorer duty and explore the castle or chicken out if you feel it to be dangerous. Well, obviously we're going to explore the castle. In particular, I think we're, uh, we're well handled, well handled, we're well suited to handle this because Philippe is a scientist and a rogue and an engineer. The first room is a fantastic dining hall, barely touched. Philippe marvels at the well-preserved architecture, but the rest of the crew implores them to, ex to continue. These halls are only good for big stories at the renowned Explorers International Society. Uh, so a study token is four to six research, and a campaign token has two to four research plus all the status on it for us, so we're going to take the uh, good for bragging rights option here. The next room you walk through seems to be a throne room. A small wooden throne sits in the middle of an otherwise cold-looking room. The crew stares at the throne for a good three to four seconds before Bia suggests that you continue exploring. What a strange little interlude. The next room is a long hallway. You also find what you're expecting. Mechanical traps. They had to be here somewhere. How will you solve this? Well, I reckon uh, we can just disable the damn trap, right? Yeah, 89%. Ah, if we fail, we'll lose a resolve. That would be a bummer. We do have a lot of resolve, though, and you get two additional resolve each time you complete an expedition. So, I'm willing to risk a resolve. I think we can hold on to our tool for a little while longer. Um, that didn't... I didn't mean that the way that sounded. 
With a little twist and turn, Philippe deftly manages to disable the trap and salvages parts good for research. Nice, three tokens. Now you can continue to the room that was guarded by this trap hall. Yeah, let's see what's in there. You wonder what this castle has been trying to protect so badly. There's got to be treasure behind a door that's guarded by traps, right? Bia opens the door and you find... A treasure chamber, yeah! Silverware, coins, ceremonial weaponry. This place is worth a small fortune. Then you hear a voice next to you. Whoa, lads, look at that gold! I told you to follow the great McRae! Hey, that's not even one of my crew members. Yeah, who's this McRae guy? Screw him, I disabled all the traps. God, Bia always looks so mad. She looks like she's possessed. It seems there was another entrance. They turn to you. What are you doing here? This is the great McRae's discovery. Oh well, we both found it at the same time. We can share the hall as long as you're not a stinking English bawhide. Oh, that's not... I don't know what that means, but it can't be good. Uh, agree to split the treasure? No. No, this is my treasure. I got here first. Even if I hadn't got here first, I still would take it all. Well, what are you wee lads thinking about? How about we, uh... Okay, so we... We are getting to decide how we want to start the encounter. It's really to our benefit to be aggressive, which means that we want to start out kind. Let's approach them friendly, let them get friendly, and then uh, stab them in the back. Because that's how we get down, you know? B is all about results. So, if we f finish the encounter friendly, we get three quarters of the treasure. If we finish it devious or aggressive, we take everything. I think that uh, this is kind of a no-brainer. Alright, so, pretty standard Highlander. We saw these guys last time. But here we have the Great McRae. 150 spirit. Immune to sadness and strong against resistance. He'll only take half damage. Or strong against resistance. Strong against terrified. He'll only take half damage from terrified. He has terrified resistance. He's weak to being made confident, which I think, yeah, we have access to confident. Encourage is a confidence ability. Hmm. Well, the question is, how long do we want to roll positive before we take advantage of this, uh, this backstab? I wish we had a good area effect physical attack, you know? Well, wow, Philippe can't... This must be a square of difficult terrain. It's got the little, uh, little hash marks in it. So she can only use one of her abilities from this range. Padrino, of course, can go anywhere he wants. He's got five move. And because he's a scout, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't take the difficult terrain penalty. Maybe we could stay friendly with them for a turn. In fact, we could go party time right here. So, I have a conundrum. If we use the party time ability, it'll do pretty good damage, but it'll make everybody that it hits excited. And while they're excited, they have plus 25% speech. We can expect these guys to attack with speech-based attacks since they're in friendly mode. They're going to use friendly speech attacks. Um... We have Try to Impress available on Bia. If we hit somebody with this, they'll become impressed, and it'll lower their speech defense. So my first instinct is to impress one of these enemies, then go for party time, uh, so that we deal more damage with the party time attack, because they have lowered speech defense. But if we do it that way, the enemy will end the turn excited and do extra damage to us. If we go the other way around, we go party time and then try to impress. We won't get the extra damage from the enemy being impressed, but the enemy will end the turn impressed instead of excited, so it won't do the 25% bonus damage. Uh, the other option is maybe if we impress this guy and then party time on him, we'll just knock him out of the fight entirely. That would be pretty cool. Do I think that's likely? No, not really. All right, I'm going to go for the extra damage. We have quite a bit of resolve. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if somebody got knocked out of the fight and we had to revive them. So, party time. Unfortunately, it's hard to judge how much part damage party time is going to do uh, by looking at it. Oh, we did get him. Awesome. 
because the projected damage bar does not include the bonus damage that party time deals for uh, surrounding enemies. He can't really do anything useful to the enemies, but he can encourage Bia to put her into confident mode, which gives her attack power bonus. So when we do the backstab, it's going to be big. McRae is going to get stabbed in the back so very, very hard. Oh, it looks like they're actually they're attacking us with... Or at least McRae attacked with a confidence-inspiring attack. Yes, we're all going to be great friends. I sense that about us. All right. Can I get... Uh, unfortunately, the negativity of Enrage will only uh, put him back to neutral, which means he won't actually become enraged, because he has to be negative after the attack hits for that to happen. May we lead with this? He's immune to Sadden. That's really unfortunate, actually. And Amnesia Shot won't lower his... Uh, what is this called? Uh, it won't lower his, his attitude. He won't become neutral from doing it. I was really hoping to get him into Enrage before I have Bia come over here and shank him. But it looks like that's not happening. So what Bia's going to do is unnoticeable attack. This attack does not have an attitude. It won't push us over into aggressive, but it's still a physical attack, so it gets the bonus from backstab. Right. Pretty reasonable damage. He has quite a bit of armor. And in the meantime, I think it might be time to start stripping these dudes down. Do I want to down one of them? Yeah, maybe it's time to just use our backstab ability on one of these guys. Oh, what an unfortunate fumble. Alright. We're going to try to sadden this guy so that he deals less damage with his next speech attack then. And we're accumulating a lot of points of non-aggressive attitudes, but you really do get a lot of bonus points from dealing... Um, the final blow to an enemy with the right attitude of attack. So I'm confident that when we uh, when we down all these guys with physical attacks, it'll be fine. Now, if we use a devious attack, it's going to push us over into devious, and I really don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do instead is this is the moment when we reveal our true intentions. Uh, the attitude that you're in at the end of the battle also gets a couple of bonus points for dominance. <sighs> Unfortunately, this guy has so much... Hmm. Well, now that we've revealed ourselves, though, we can attack him to lower his... lower his inclination a little bit, and then we can give him the enrage. Okay. I bet we can take him down with a single attack from Bia now. They go hostile as well. Ooh, are we gonna lose Padrino here? Nope, the enemy split their attacks. And missed anyway. What a bunch of fools. This dude has 37. Actually, Bia's attack may be insufficient. He has... I don't know. Okay. He does not have enough armor to hold her off. All right. Aggressive is now the dominant attitude. We're going to do this because this guy's very weak to it. And then we are going to cut him in half. Alright, fantastic. We take everything and we get all these tokens and everything is wonderful. Those bagpipes won't trouble you anymore. Are we... Referring to those guys as bagpipes, that feels like a uh, culturally insensitive, maybe. Ah, the treasure is yours. Four treasure hunt tokens. You're done searching the castle. You go outside and continue exploring. From now on, the crew will be weir weary of entering any castles in the Highlands. That's probably supposed to be wary. The double Scottish trap is not something your crew would like to experience anytime soon. Okay, well, 
that was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping for a treasure. But, uh, the sharp-eyed among you may have noticed that there was no treasure icon on that node. On the dark side of the hills, you encounter something eerie. An abandoned manor. A plaque reads that this manor is called the Spiteful Explorer. A peculiar name. That is peculiar. Through the broken windows, you can see something... You can see some shimmering items. At first look, it seems a private collection has been left behind here. Your crew wants to take a look inside, but one must keep guard just in case. I think that sounds like a good job for Bia. The other crew members carefully walk up the porch and open the door. Inside the abandoned manor, you find quite the weapons collection. There are way more swords, guns, and maces than you can carry. Obviously, it would be a shame to leave all these historical pieces here to rust. Sure, or a thief might steal them. You contemplate what to take with you. Uh, we're going to go for campaign tokens once again, because our campaign tokens rule now. After picking up the weapons that look worthwhile, you continue down the hallway. It seems uninteresting, but upon careful examination, Philippe finds something. A secret doorway. Let's yeah, let's look inside the secret door. Wow, this is, uh... Yeah, that's the expression I'm wearing. You can't believe what you see. Bloody knives, backpacks, and compasses are scattered around. But even scarier, there are paintings of renowned explorer members marked with red crosses and death marks. Death marks? Jesus. You feel lucky you're not a member of the renowned explorers yet. I don't... That's not true. We are... We totally are. I got a badge and everything. A secret uncovered. Hey, free secret token. Then you hear Bia storm in with a serious face. Her face is so serious that it's actually making noise now. I believe it. That probably... I bet there's a lot of wind resistance on that look. A strong and shady... <laughs> what a... What a... What a pair of descriptors. They're strong and they're shady. And they're approaching the manor. You're forced to make a run for it in the opposite direction and hope you won't get spotted. Look at this. All this, all this scouting and roguing. We're extremely good at fleeing for things. What a relief. You get away without being noticed. Those men will surely notice some items missing and their secret door unlocked. But they won't know who did it. The crew is relieved, but also shocked by what they saw. Man, now continue running, just in case. Yeah, let's just keep going. You're safe. The thugs did not follow you, and you're well hidden. The crew sits down to catch its breath. Who were those guys? What do they have to do with the renowned explorers? All you know is that you'd better watch your backs. But Bia's gonna soothe the crew. Bia talks to the others about what happened and explains that whatever you do in life, there will always be people who are against you. Bia also makes it clear that by sticking together, you can take on any challenge or danger. Inspired by the words of Bia, the crew feels a bit relieved. What is that? Does that mean anything mechanically that we feel relieved? I don't know. Alright, sorry about that sudden interruption. Uh, the little jump cut there. I hope is not too distressing for anyone. Okay, well. Moving on. We have two supplies left. Uh, this would show us two new nodes. This also will show us two new nodes. Uh, this might be the Hidden Horde. Probably it's nothing. This is definitely XP and tokens, so we're going for it. Interesting, another purple. Another purple special node. As your crew rounds a sharp bend in the path, you come face to face with a flock of oblivious sheep. You try to move them out of the way. In response, they form a cordon around your crew, blocking escape in any direction. Well, I'm not afraid of sheep. I'll fight a sheep. Ah, an encounter token for going friendly. That ain't happening. We will start the encounter friendly, of course. So that we can backstab them more effectively. Hmm. So the way I'd like to start this encounter is by... Yeah, the sheep have pretty low spirit and are weak to excited. So I think what I want to do here is... Open the encounter with party time. Yep, that'll reduce their numbers pretty, uh, pretty solidly. And then... We're gonna get violent. We didn't actually need to go friendly to get the backstab bonus first. These things have such low spirit that we probably could have just downed them with... But one shot them with physical attacks in any circumstance. But we have very little in the way of abilities that affect multiple enemies. 
So it was nice to be able to down four of them in the first turn. Especially since they seem to have a very low success rate on their attacks. I say attack loosely. They clearly were trying to make us feel happy. I do feel a little bit bad for uh, murdering them because they are adorable. The art in Abbey games is always really good. Alright, well that was easy enough. Now that you have forced the sheep through the way, you can move on. That was very strange. I feel like maybe if we had uh, handled that differently, we might have seen something interesting. Philippe has leveled up again. We are going to take the point of engineer, just so he's a rogue and an engineer, both at level 2, for the purposes of that research paper. Alright, if we don't find any supplies here, then we're going to take a supply out penalty, but we'll be right next to... Uh, we'll be right next to the goal, so it's fine. Let's see what we got. It's another castle. An old castle, the type we're supposed to be wary of. But everybody is drenched to the bone because of the rain and yearns for a little comfort. So let's approach the castle and knock on the giant wooden doors. You see, you hear someone unlocking a small peephole in the wooden door. Greetings, travelers. What is it that you need? Bia explains your situation and the absolute need of a comfortable dry night. Uh, we don't let just anyone enter. You need to prove yourself either by arm wrestling or in battle. So we can arm wrestle the doorman or we can... Let's, I'm really good at proving myself in battle, actually. The door opens and in front of you stands a Scottish Highlander. He whistles once and before you know it, two other Highlanders have joined him. Yeah, okay. I can, I can deal with three Highlanders. I feel like we've been dealing with three Highlanders over and over again since we got here, basically. Plus, XP and tokens. So, these guys are still weak to the same stuff as before. Let's lead... Hmm. If we lead Devious, we can do a couple of uh, aggressive actions before our party actually tips over into aggressive mode. Like, now that that's done, who has the higher speech? Uh, they both have the same speech. Alright, so Philippe can come over here, drop this guy with an attack. That'll give us some points of aggression. We'll get two pips here, we'll get a point over there. And then Bia can use a devious attack to set this guy up. This way... We stay devious, we don't suffer the penalty for being aggressive against their deviousness, although honestly, they probably would just go aggressive in response. That's what's happened the last couple of times. And now we get super violent. Oh. The uh, penalty to her attack for being terrified is significant. Can you one-shot this guy? No, nobody can. How unfortunate. I'm going to hit him with try to impress, because it's the only way she can contribute to his, uh, to the attack on him. Oh, it looks like we've really goofed this up. I think what we're going to do is throw an enrage on this guy, get them both quite weak. Alright, Philippe can one-shot this guy. This will leave us aggressive against their devious uh, if they don't change attitudes, but that's fine. If we only take one attack, it won't matter. And, in fact, yeah. When we go hostile, they go hostile. These Highlanders are really making this easy for us. Alright, and then everybody just attacks him until he passes out. Padrino gets the honors. Easy enough, we're really racking up the victories here. Look at all these tokens, man. The Highlanders are amazed by the way you just handled the situation. Please, do come in, my friend, and tell us all about yourself. You've been given a tour of the castle. A whole load of friendly Highlanders are gathered there, but for what, you do not know. After a great dinner with lamb as the main, you decide to sleep. That's a... I guess detail's good. The beds are comfortable and warm, and you fall asleep right away. 
But then, in the middle of the night, a strange noise wakes you. It sounds like people are getting ready for battle. Once everyone is dressed, you rush downstairs to see what is happening. You stop at a door and are certain the sound is coming from behind the door. Well, obviously, let's see what's happening. You swing open the door and see the Highlanders doing some sort of war dance. The leader of the Highlanders is painting everybody with war paint. The doorman you met earlier comes up to you. Hey there, since you have proved to us how strong you are, why don't you join us in our war dance? We call out to our ancestors who died in battle to give us strength and courage. Ooh, that's interesting. We could gain a supply. I think we're uh, going to give somebody the athlete perk. Since we don't currently have an athlete, we're just going to lay it all on Philippe. Because we want Philippe to be as good as, uh, as good as we can get him at as many different things as we can get him. So that he's always the one rolling on the adventure wheel. So that we trigger that bonus from that one research paper as often as possible. You join the dance. Philippe feels completely in sync with the Highlanders. After the war dance is over, Philippe feels incredibly tough. The dance is over and you go back to sleep. You wake up the following morning and discuss the events with the doorman and talk some more about the war dance. With filled stomachs, you say goodbye to the friendly Highlanders. Hey, with filled stomachs, it should give us some... No. Oh. Philippe loses speech defense. That's not fantastic. Let's get out of here. Unless one of these notes has supplies. Nope, nothing adjacent had supplies. Let's go face the abbess. The abbey seems well fortified. You're probably not the first one to come looking for this treasure. Philippe seems to seems ugh, Philippe even seems to identify some cloth that looks like it belongs to Rivalu. What is he just leaving his pants outside the the abbey? Bias decides to go for it and knocks on the massive door of the abbey. You hear the voice of the abbess from the other side. Go away! I know what you're after. Well, since she ain't opening up, is it cool to kick in the door of an abbey? We could try to talk our way in. Maybe, maybe we're sneaky enough. Philippe, could you lead us in the sneaking? This might be the last roll of the adventure, and the consequences for failure are pretty high, so we're just going to go ahead and tool it and get the 100%. With Philippe's sneaking skills, you find a way in while the abbess is looking through a peephole to see if you've really gone. You have the chance to surprise her in your own style. So, all your crew members gain bursting in aggressively decreases the chance that your friendly actions will have any effect by 50%. Well, this just seems like a really bad idea. Right? Because when we start the encounter in any other way, we get the same payout, and it's the same encounter. Yeah, why not just choose friendly and then go aggressive if we, we want to be aggressive afterward? kind of a false choice. Look at this. We are totally going to beat up this uh, this poor old nun. I feel a little bad. Just, <laughs> just the littlest bit, though. <laughs> Alright, so... The nuns have 25 spirit. That's not so bad. No armor. A little bit of speech defense. They're weak to terrify and strong against saddened. The abbess herself... Gives 50% of her speech defense to her speech. That's interesting. Her condemnation is extra strong when you're aggressive, so we don't want to spend too many turns aggressive. We want to uh, sneak attack her down as quickly as possible. When she prays, her speech defense will increase if you hit her. And she's resistant to terrified and saddened. Immune to enrage. That's unfortunate. We really like enrage. And weakened... Weakness to excited, but unfortunately making her excited is only going to uh, strengthen her attacks. That said, running over there and dropping... Hmm, running over there and dropping party time on her would probably take out one of these nuns. These guys are weak to terrify? Alright. We're on Bia up here. We're just going to try to remove as many of the sisters from between us and the boss as possible. When it comes time to actually be us against the abbess, we want not to be getting torn apart from behind the whole time. So that's probably going to work. You only have 16 speech defense. So we'll move you up into the bottleneck. Take care of this one. 
Very pleasant. Everybody loves... Uh, we don't know how we feel about his Maraca playing, but we sure do love it when he talks about Maracas. Ah, uh, so annoying. It's so annoying that uh, it only takes one aggressive act to move over from friendly to aggressive. It makes total thematic imbalance sense, but still I am frustrated. Okay, that was lucky. I don't know exactly how much damage that attack would have done, would have done but I'm sure it was a lot. Wow. That's messed up. I thought she was gonna, like, condemn his behavior or judge him as a person. But no, it's just like, your underwear is dirty. Gross. You have brown stains in your crotch. Why? Look at that. That ain't right. If your underwear looks like that after you wear it, go to the doctor. Like, right now, stop watching the video and go to the doctor. I'll be here when you get back. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to do Tranquility. Get it on cooldown so it'll be available again as quickly as possible afterward. Huh. And the question is... I think we do party time. I'm gonna step to here and do party time in this space. It'll drop both of those nuns, and we won't get any damage onto the abbess from it, but that means she won't end up in the excited state, which I think is a fair trade-off. Right, thinning the crowd a little bit. You stay right where you are, and try to impress this nun. Good work. I'm impressed by us as well. I know exactly how you feel. We've got a nice speech defense bonus. Oh, here we go. Well, there goes that. Wow. That Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Also, what did she say? Feely me? Resolve down. He's got so little speech defense. Alright, so the turn that you res somebody, they do get the ability to act immediately. Uh, what is my plan here? All right. I think we're going to continue to take care of the little enemies. <laughs> we'll pick him back up. As you can see, getting someone back into the fight is totally trivial. It's just a matter of uh, not having them get defeated and lose your resolve over and over again. All right, good enough. Now we haven't seen it yet in the in the other boss fights. It didn't really come up, but uh, there's an infinite number of yeah. You can see more nuns join the abyss. There's an infinite number of enemies in boss fights, so she'll gain 15 speech every time we hit her, and she has 15 speech right now. Hmm. Of course, the turn that we clear all the other targets is the turn that she goes nuts with her buff. She has 180 spirit. There's no way we're going to blitz through that before she can... Uh, before she can take her turn and get the benefit of all the hits. This is frustrating. This is difficult. So I think what we're going to do instead of hitting her is just kind of hunker down. I'm going to make oh, Bia confident. When, when the time for violence comes, she's got to be ready. And we're going to send Pedrino over here. He's going to one-shot this, uh, this nun, get attacked by the other nun, and then one-shot her as well. Ah, I want to walk down there and hit her so badly. But she does not need another 15 strength. Fifteen strength. I mean, fifteen speech. Obviously. Excellent. Alright. Now is the time. This is the time for violence. 
She has no armor, at least. Yeah, wow, look at how much damage this does. 104. Man, backstab is powerful. It's a powerful bonus. We have 15 points of aggress of uh, friendly attitude. Right. I'm going to kick us over into aggressive mode. But if we down the boss right now, I don't think we'll actually get the credit for finishing the encounter aggressive. Look at how far apart... Oh. Actually, moving from friendly directly to aggressive dramatically cuts the number of points you have scored in the friendly attitude. So we only have three points in this attitude. I wonder if downing the Abyss right now will be enough. Her speech is super high. I think we had uh, we gotta nip this in the bud. We'll just hope that the points we get for defeating her with a physical or with an aggressive attack are enough to kick aggressive or to kick our aggressiveness over into our dominant mood. Okay, it was. Yeah, 12. You get a lot of points for the killing blow on a boss. Alright, well, that's a lot of research. The Abbess can't believe she's finally overrun! Her defense of the Abbey falls. She mumbles in disbelief before she hits the ground. Burst into a religious building and knock everyone out. You can check that off your bucket list. Now the treasure is yours to grab. Hooray! Yeah, let's grab a treasure. Let's kick a nun's ass and steal all her stuff. Right, plus two campaign tokens whenever a level three beguiler succeeds on the adventure wheel. Padrino can become a level two beguiler with his next level up. We might be able to get him a level of beguiler from uh, from an entourage member or from a treasure or something. With the treasure in hand, the crew leaves the abbey. This expedition is a great success and you can't wait to prepare for your next endeavor. Back to London. I do feel a little bad that uh, in my first showing of this game, I'm playing it kind of like a, a standard RPG and that I'm solving every problem by just hitting it with a sword. I will probably do another, another run after this one where we make a little bit more use of the speech attacks. Alright, a fine haul, not amazing. We, uh, we're not getting as many treasures as I would like. But, we're up to 875. Wow, we did not gain a lot of renown there. This actually might be a little bit tight. We're scoring quite low. Explorer Society board members are excited at the progress of this awesome autocrat. I'm not a big fan of that appellation, either. I don't want to be an autocrat. With that great adventure behind you, you can send a report to an explorer welcoming city. This will unlock new possibilities. Yeah, you, we, we talked about this. So, equipment shop in New Orleans, equipment shop in Sydney, or new jobs in Africa where you can spend your insight. I think we're going to take that one. Because our options for insight currently are pretty sore. Are sore? Pretty poor. They're pretty poor is what they are. Jumbo, skilled explorer, the African Union has heard about your amazing trials. We'd like to invite you to our ports, uh, societies, and monuments to share our in... Your, share... The, the, the. Reading is fundamental, kids. Share your insight. Kind regards, Professor Yakub Tour. Okay, cool. Well... Uh, another successful expedition, not wildly successful. We're still a lot of renown short of our goal. We need to uh, we need to wrestle up about two thousand renown if we want to win this game, and we only have two expeditions in which to do it. Will we make it? Find out next time, and also the time after that. Please keep watching, renowned explorers. <laughs>